Good day, students. Welcome to mathgotserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 178 to 182 of the KC Algebra 1 release test questions. All right, let's take a look at problem 178. This is, uh, says, if x equals negative 7, then negative x equals... So to compute this, we're simply going to substitute the value of x into this uh, new expression right here, and then determine what um, the resulting um, answer will be, okay? So negative x is simply going to be negative. Instead of x, the value of x is negative 7. So we will substitute negative 7 for x. We have negative 7. Now, when you multiply two negatives, remember, anytime you multiply signs that are the same, your resulting sign is always positive. So you have positive 7. For positive numbers, you don't have to write the plus, okay? So the final answer is neg uh, positive 7, option letter D. All right, let's take a look at problem number 179. It reads, the perimeter of a square may be found by using the formula 1 fourth p equals the square root of a, where a is the area of the square. What is the perimeter of the square with an area of 36 square inches? Okay, so um, we are given the perimeter, we are given um, the area, area is 36 square inches, so what do we know? We know that A is equal to 36. And what are we looking for? It says, what is the perimeter? So P is an unknown. All right. So the equation that relates the area of a square and its perimeter is 1 fourth P equals the square root of A. All right. So how are we going to solve this problem? We will simply substitute the value of a into a and then solve for p. So let's go ahead and make the substitution. We're going to have 1 fourth p for perimeter equals the square root. Instead of a, we'll substitute the value of a, which is 36. And I will solve this resulting algebraic equation for p. Okay? First, let's focus on simplifying this um, radical expression here. So we have the square root of 4, p, equals square root of 36 is 6. Now to isolate p, how do we get rid of this 1 fourth? We just multiply both sides by 4, or 4 over 1, the same thing, okay? Multiply both sides by 4, you have p equals 24. And since this is just... Um, a length, our perimeter P is going to be 24 inches. Okay, so the answer is option letter C. All right, let's take a look at problem 180. It reads, what is the reciprocal of AX squared divided by Y? So what is the meaning of reciprocal? Reciprocal basically means that um, you um, invert the fraction. When you reciprocate, the numerator becomes the denominator and the denominator becomes the numerator. All right, so if we want to reciprocate a x squared divided by y, guess what? The numerator a x squared is going to go downstairs, becomes the denominator, and the denominator goes upstairs becomes the numerator. So we switch the numerator for the denominator and the denominator for the numerator. All right, that is what reciprocation involves. So when we reciprocate this term right here, we'll have y divided by ax squared. All right, so the correct answer is option letter D. Now, one thing you want to note is that you do not switch the sign when you're looking for the reciprocal. When you're looking for the inverse, that's when you switch the sign, okay? So this is our correct answer. 
All right, let's take a look at problem 181. It says, if x is an integer, what is the solution to the absolute value of x minus 3 <clears throat> is less than 1? So in this problem, we're going to be solving an absolute value inequality. Okay? So we have this situation here. Now, since it's less than, anytime you have an absolute value inequality that's less than or less than or equal to, you can solve it as a sandwiched inequality. All right, so since you have this absolute value quantity less than 1, it can be written as negative 1 is less than x minus 3, and x minus 3 is less than 1. All right, so any sandwich inequality can be solved by breaking it up into this format. All right, now we're going to solve this equation by isolating x. Now, what do you have um, next to x in between these two inequality symbols? You have negative 3. So to address that, we add 3 to all three sides of our compound inequality, like that. Minus 1 plus 3, subtract and keep the sign of the bigger, 2, less than, these two add up to 0, x less than 1 plus 3 is 4. Now, um, the solution tells us that x is an integer. So what integer is between 2 and 4? 2, 3, 4. The only integer between 2 and 4 is 3. So x has to be equal to 3. So our answer is option letter C. Now let's take a look at 182. This is an absolute value inequality problem. It reads, if x is an integer, which of the following is the solution set for 3 times the absolute value of x equals 15? So first thing you want to do when solving absolute value equations or inequalities is isolate the absolute value quantity. In this case, the absolute value of x must be isolated first. To accomplish that, we have to divide both sides by 3. So we will have the absolute value of x equals 15 divided by 3, 5. Now, uh, we can rewrite the absolute value. Absolute value represents the distance from a number, either from the to the left or to the right. So absolute value of x equals 3 can be written as um, plus or minus x equals Five. Okay, and then we can divide both sides by plus or minus 1 to get this sign over to the other side, and your final result is going to be x equals plus or minus 5, all right? So if we want to write this uh, in separated format, we're going to have x equals negative 5 or x is equal to positive 5, and we can include it in a squiggly bracket. All right, so our answer is option letter B. Okay, let's take a look at problem 183. This is another absolute value equation. So 10 times the absolute value of x equals 2.5. So remember in problem 182, what is the first step? in solving absolute value equations or inequalities. You have to isolate the absolute value quantity, right? In this case, it's absolute value of x. So we simply divide both sides by 10. So we'll have the absolute value of x is equal to 2.5 over 10. Now, how can we divide this without using a calculator? Well, um, if I can make the denominator 1, then the numerator will be the result of this quotient because any number divided by 1 is that number, okay? So how do we make this number 10 1? Well, put the decimal point behind it. What we're going to do is we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 10. When you do that, what happens is that your decimal point is going to move one place to the left. When you divide the denominator by 10, it becomes 1. 
And in the numerator, the decimal point also moves one place to the left, identical amount of movements, okay? So our final answer, well, not our final answer, we're going to have the absolute value of x equals uh, 0 0.25 divided by 1. Now, what is 0 0.25 divided by 1? It's 0 0.25, right? Um, so this becomes the absolute, let's shift this up a little bit. <clears throat> this becomes the absolute value of x equals 0 0.25. Now, the absolute value of x can be written as plus or minus x equals 0.25. And then we can divide both sides of the equation by plus or minus 1 to move this plus or minus sign to the other side. And then we'll have x equals plus or minus 0 0.25. And if we want to write it in separated form, we have x equals negative 0 0.25 or 0 0.25, okay? So your final answer, as you can clearly see, is option letter A. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of the tutorials on this review series. If you have any questions about the KC exam, just include it in the comments section below this video and we'll be glad to address your concerns. More clips can be found at math.serve.com under test prep and KC. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.